Girls in the Wardy TV Spring Championship. In the top right hand side, she just took down Spirit 3 to 1, and she is rocking that Zerg and Shopify Rebellion flag into this quarterfinal matchup. Our blue Zerg player, Scarlet. Taking on in the bottom left hand corner, the Red Terran from Team Liquid. Let's give it up. Make some noise for Clem. As we get into game one of what is a best of five here in the quarterfinals. Get this up and running, get ready to rumble, and see what Clem and Scholar will bring us. Clem, oh, well, Scholar just played a very fun DVD series. Clem has been playing some great TVC lately, maybe not as good as we kind of usually always expect from Clem, just because we expect the extreme absolute best. But I will say, when he does builds like this with the Reapers and so on, he's actually been looking really good. He has kind of that beyond factor. Um, he's so good with his control, he's so good with his micro, he can make these things work. And that gets me immediately excited when I see him doing this at the start of this game. I'm immediately invested because, uh, yeah, it's been fun to watch Clem do this lately. It's something he didn't do for a long time, even when a lot of other players did. And then it feels like recently he just kind of uh, did kind of kind of find his kind of groove with these Reapers. He did suddenly was like, hey, like, actually, this is kind of good. I'm going to use this a little bit, you know. So first two Reapers on the way up. We'll see how many he wants to go for. I think when I have seen Clem doing this, it's really only typically been the two racks. I don't believe I've seen him go for the three racks or anything. Although he did have one game against Dark where he played pretty aggressively with the Reapers and there was like a bunch of Reapers trading out early. So maybe he did play three racks one game. As we get moving along. So I want to say a quick thank you to the raid that came in just as we got going as well. Uh, thank you so much, TKL, dropping us with the raid. Hope you're doing good. Welcome, everybody. This is the Spring Championships from Morty TV. And, uh, yeah, excited to see what happens as Clem. Coming out to you, obviously, first place in his group straight to this quarterfinal. Fighting for a chance to move through to the semis, semifinals here today. Oh, uh, sorry, semifinals will be on Sunday. What I was going to tell you guys is just a little bit about the uh, tournament prize pool and what semifinals means if you advance from in this match. Semifinals means guaranteed $400, bunch of Wardy TV points, and obviously up to $1,500 for first place. You'd still be in the running for that as well. I stand alive today. Top eight, $250 guaranteed for these guys already. As a Reaper start a fight, start a trade. Looking for a little bit of this damage here and there. As we go up, we go down. Couple Queens getting some shots off. That kind of stuff to uh, start things out for us right now. Zergling speed is about to be done. Over on the side of uh, Scarlet, so she'll get that up and running for herself. And we'll kind of just roll with that and see where we end up, see what happens over the next little while. I actually think I uploaded the Clem vs. Dog series I was talking about to YouTube last night. It did ter terribly because yesterday was a GSL day. It's always so dumb. It's like GSL's on instantly. Anything you upload, YouTube hates it. Um, but real talk, um, in this game right now, it just again, three Reapers, like I said, I didn't think it was going to be too overly aggressive from Clem or anything. And did they achieve too much? Well, too much, absolutely not, right? Like, they didn't kill anything. In fact, they didn't really do much at all. Not even getting a creep tumor or so. So, this honestly was one of the better initial defenses from Scarge. He gets a third da hatchery down nice and quickly too, so no delays on that. And now we're into this next stage of the game with a pretty comfortable start for Scarlet on a map that is her map pick to start off this series. And, and that kind of combination of things just has to have you at least a little bit scared here for Clem. Because this just means that he is starting off in, again, such a way that it's just not maybe necessarily... You know, you know, like I say, just quite the kind of, you know, momentum-based start that a Terran player wants when they're playing on the Zergia maps. Compared to the last series, Clem did veto Altitude, hence Ancient Sister is the map played. Last time we actually saw Altitude played and Ancient Sister and vetoed. That's generally the odd way around to do it. This is the much more normal way around to do your videos as a Terran player for a best of five. Like I say, Skull got first map pick, which means that she picks straight into the Zerg map of Ancient. And that's why we start out here. And like I say, without Clem getting some early damage done, it is going to be a bit of an upward hill battle. Like, especially for Scarlet, who is, in my eyes, at her absolute peak when she just doesn't have that early game Terran pressure coming her way, when she can just play her game. I think we saw a great example of that in that previous series, and I honestly would not be surprised to see more of that coming across throughout the course of this one as well, as Lings just open up the rocks. And yeah, 
let's see what she can do. As Clem will start to get droppy, and there's one thing we did see Scarlet have yesterday where she was in a pretty good position against Kira, and then the aggression started, and she just got completely outsped. She just wasn't able to keep up, she wasn't able to trade well enough in across all of the different fights that were happening on the map, and that's the kind of, you know, style that Clem can play very well too, so... As the Marines load up into these medevacs, they're gonna pull back and retreat away for the moment. Medivac's just gonna unload on the other side of the rocks here. One one upgrades, combat shield all continuing through. Blair is producing the drones on the way. And our link's still moving up to this right side. I'm just gonna tap for one moment, guys. I'm kind of intrigued what the predictions are here. Yeah, wow. 621,000 points to Clem. 120,000 points to Scholar. So Clem is a massive favorite in the chat on the uh, predictions. That is a, uh, uh, what, like about 5 to 1? Yeah, everyone favorite. I think it's 84% Clem, so that's actually kind of a bonkers uh, stat. Obviously, uh, Scholar taking down Spirit hasn't impressed people enough. Honestly, you know, Scholar taking down Spirit, Clem maybe not playing his best TVZ as we saw at Home Story Cup, losing a 0-3 to Solar. I'd say this is maybe one of Scarlet's better opportunities to take down a Clem, although Clem doing things wonderfully so far. Knocking the creep down over here, making it so that Scarlet cannot just get free control of this map or anything, just really controlling this as best as possible. And these are the exact kind of things you want to be doing early on, as those few Marines are going to hold tight, and we are just going to be having at the same time. Well, yeah, just, uh, I mean, Marines holding this position. We actually see a few Queens coming forward. One of those goes down. We're going to grab ourselves a couple of drones as well. This is just what's so annoying. Clem's just holding one position. He's just finding a unit here, finding a unit there. He's just chipping on through you. Now Marines are going to stem up this left-hand side, led by the Artosalope. Artosalope, the symbol of hope for Terran players, apparently, as we lead on to creep. And now these Marines are going to go chasing drones as well. Five, six, seven, eight drones going down immediately, make it ten. We hop up, we go to the main base. Melee upgrade's about to be done. Bane speed about to be done. Scott's about to be in a much better spot than she was, but... It's still not exactly pretty as this medevac takes a lot of damage off the spawn and the queen. One went down, the other very nearly going down. We lose two more queens on the bottom right hand side and Clem is now starting to step up into that next level. But he is just here, there and absolutely everywhere throughout the starting moments of game number one. Lings and Hydra still building, now we're... <coughs> Marines will come through one more time as Ling Bane Wants to try and get on top of those marines, it will not be able to. Still seeing our 2-2 building up though on the side of the engineering base and on the left hand side a few marines will stem forward as well. It's gonna be a queen we knock down, a couple of creep tumors. Nope, just gonna find ourselves a second queen. Two queens going down. I mean still the queen kill count's gotta be huge. He has seven queens killed. We've almost lost as many queens as we have marines in this game. Resources lost 225, uh, 2225 to 950. Everything about this is just continuing to power into the favor of Clem. He's had a fantastic opening here on Ancient Cistern, and this game is looking good for him now. The only thing I will say, I've said it before and I'll always say it, this is the Zerg map pick. This is one of the better maps for Zerg. This momentum is great, and this is the kind of momentum I feel like you need on a map like Ancient to have a good shot. But sometimes this map is still just too big. Sometimes this map is still just a little bit, you know, too sizable, right? And that is one of those moments where it's just like, ah, oh, you know... It can just be tough for the Terran to continue through. Scald's still going to end up maxed out here. Scald still has creep spread across the middle of the map, right? These are all things that Clem starts to contest with, trying to close this game out. Marines load up. And away we go, as we have our medevac just pulling back over here as well, and just very nearly dropping down as, well. where are these Marines going? They're just going to go on a bit of a move command past this army. Army over here as well from Clem, gonna have to get on the move ASAP as well, so just be a little bit careful about this force moving through. Skull from two sides, got some pretty good connections with her initial bane wings. Yeah, and on top of this, the last couple of tanks are going down, the splash damage is gonna be very limited now. Cancelling up one of the bases that was at the front there as well. Clem just lifted his third CC as he tries to evacuate SCVs away from those bane lanes. Clem takes a pretty bad uh, fight. A lot of work is dead. Skull again, a massive trade, especially knocking down a lot of the splash damage, such as the siege tanks. I'd say Skull's going to be pretty happy with that. That was a pretty darn good start, man. All right, well, that was a pretty good way to get things going. Awesome fight from Skull. Just get uh, kind of everything going right for her. This Clem is immediately going to start counterattacking. Pretty equal army supplies here, but Clem seems pretty committed. He's on eight racks. He's on the three bases. He's on that push 
in setup where you just start pushing, you don't stop. But taking a bad fight like that to start with takes so much power out of it. So the tank count is going to get reset once again. And if the tank count never gets high enough, this sort of attack is just nowhere near as scary as it ever, you know, usually is. And that means the Skull's going to have a very okay time dealing with this. The tank out down the low ground. Skull going to pull back. This game was really not pretty for her in the early game. This was really not good for her throughout the first moments. But now, now Skull's up 30 workers. Now Skull just, just kind of one cleanup away from winning game number one. She just has to find a way to fight this army, which is low HP, low energy medivacs for the most part. One single siege tank, again, having reset the tank count two times now, is absolutely huge. That is the sort of damage you just can't really recover from. It's going to be seen a little bit of bio trying after a queen here. Skull's looking to maybe intercept some reinforcements as well. As she moves over, just going to be seeing her deciding to jump on this. Like I say, there's no real splash damage here without splash. It's a very easy fight for Scarlet comparatively to what it could have been. And I think that is genuinely just straight up enough. And she pushes this force back. Now, there's going to be a few units still left standing, but Scarlet has plus two, plus two on the way. She's just going to keep on improving her own position. I think that's going to be the biggest uh, deal of all here is the Hydras again just getting forward. There's a lot of Hydras left alive. Once again, the Siege Tank going down. Clem cannot keep those tanks alive for love nor money. And that's it. GG's game one. Scarlet opens with a lead in the best of five. And Max Pax versus Gumi Ho. Iron Marine versus Solar in that bottom semi-final. The winner of Max Pax, Gumi Ho, plays Dark as well. And then, of course, the other semi will be against the winner of this and the grand finals. That's all happening on Sunday. Hit that follow button to make sure you do not miss out. Narumi, thank you so much for the 29-month resub on the Prime as we hop into game two. Top right, up one, blue Zerg player. Now on Royal Blood, Scarlet. And actually kind of important to note too, especially for ZVT, ping advantage in Scarlet's favor for map two as well. She just won on Clem's server in game number one and that is a big deal for zvt a matchup that's very mechanical focused very like a lot happening comes down to like last second splits this is kind of the server now where clem might have a little bit more trouble so let's see what goes on as clem in the bottom left from team liquid will be trying to bounce back the west server doesn't always treat him badly but it's just one of those things we at the very least we have to mention it we have to say it right because it is noteworthy it can make the difference that is uh, for sure true bottom left now red terran clam is putting a couple of barracks out on the front of his naturals so that's going to be a starting point again going to go straight to these reapers for a second round did feel as though clam initially didn't do much in that last game but it was kind of fine the follow-up really did a lot for him it was then the follow-up of the follow-up that uh, then went wrong again so Two Reapers coming up. Reaper going to come in. It's going to be starting to head across the map as we do have it again forwards there just for the first few moments. A couple of queens coming out. Things coming in. And the command center building on the side of Clem. Comes through. A couple of links come forward. Grenade going to get uh, bobbed. A drone is going to go and uh, get hit there a little bit. Our Zerglings will fight. This is just going to be the one Reaper into the double reactor, so a little bit of a different approach. Not one I had on my bingo card for the series, but <clears throat> I'm very intrigued. Two more barracks as well, so one Reaper into just masses of Marines. And we really do mean, like, masses of Marines here. What a fascinating way to start. Ah. <laughs> I was going to say, like, it didn't really make sense. And sometimes... When things don't make sense, these guys actually do make a mistake. It was a cancel on the reactor. He notices last second he makes a tech lab. Oh, that means it's going to be a stim tie. I was like, man, this is such a wild, wonky build. <laughs> okay, cool. So it was just straight up wrong. Uh, and, and, and that makes sense, right? Because honestly, if you're going to make a lot of Marines, having an upgrade with those Marines is typically meant to be the case. 
Um, double react has never been seen before, and it'll probably never be seen again because it turns out stim's very good. But that's a pretty serious delay. Reactors are quite, quite take a long time to build, and now you've had to cancel a reactor almost finished and then build the stim. That's like a 20, 30 second delay, so that's a serious impact on Clem's opening here. That is a very serious impact on his opening. So yeah, that, that's going to hurt. That's going to be a little bit sucky for him. As we do have a few marines there, able to shave off one zergling at the very least. <laughs> I can't believe the double reactor had to cancel one. Like, four racks coming up, so that's going to be just one very aggressive push. We see Bjorn do this all the time. I kind of said this yesterday. Skull kind of crushed a build like this from QA yesterday. And I said it yesterday, and I'll say it again today. You know, she she's teammates with Bjorn. So if she's ever practiced with Bjorn for like, you know, getting players ready for like a team league match or anything, or anything along those lines, you know, then Skull is the kind of player who's going to be some of the most prepared against these kind of builds, because she probably knows the ins and outs of them, because her teammate is the one that really popularized them. I'd say that's the only issue I have with Clem trying to take some inspiration from, uh, you know, from Bjorn's gameplay right now. A few Marines will start to move out. Stim and Combat Shield. In the end, I guess the timings have worked out kind of okay. The upgrades are going to finish at a similar point anyway, so maybe it wasn't really even all so bad. Obviously, it's not great because that reactor, uh, if it was just a tech lab from the start, could have immediately started to build Marines a lot sooner, for example. So maybe we're down a few Marines from what it could have been because that reactor build and then we cancel build a tech lab. So maybe like two Marine, three Marine difference, but... As long as the upgrades are done and that's not affected his time, which I don't think it has, then I guess we can only say so much about it, I suppose. Scott's just on a Queenling defense, which is a little funky. Obviously, Queenling is maybe not the most secure way to play, maybe not the most secure way to get set up against this, especially when it's so many Marines. A Bane Nurse would actually be pretty good in this scenario, right? So if she uh, can figure out that out. I think she does roughly know what it is, though, because she's obviously in a position where she did see the double... She did know it was double racks early, at least, so she knows that part of it, so... Yeah, maybe she has a bit of a better idea than what I'm letting on. These Lings get into the natural. They're going to go for a few of these Marine kills, so that's a pretty big starting point in this game, as they're going to actually go for quite a bit of damage, actually. So they're really going to deliver a bit of a punch. 29 Ling is dead, 9 Marines down. Okay, maybe it wasn't as great as I'm talking about. I thought it was a little bit better than it was then. Fair enough. Protron from Scarlet, Lair on the way up. Next set from Clem is obviously he didn't ever really do too much with his bigger group of Marines. Instead, now he's going to focus on the Siege Tank production, the Engineering Base. He's going to start looking to make these Marines better and stronger for the future. That's going to be the next point. Did uh, slow Clem down. That is one thing as well, I guess, because the Clem obviously had to go back and respect the run by. So that means that by Scarlet a bit more time as well. Now the medevacs are here. What has Scarlet got? She's got roaches on the way. Queens are pulling all the way towards the main. She's terrified of the drop into the main base. There's obviously too many marines to lift up. There's, there's twice as many marines as there is room in the medevac. So it's not exactly great. The Lynx just counterattack again. Straight in we go. These Marines on their own just are not enough, and that means that this Mineral Line is going to end up exposed. Tank on the high ground will start to get some damage done, sure, but... Yeah, well, Deep on the high ground is actually going to be quite the saving grace. If it wasn't for that, that would have been Lings all the way into the main. As Lings go down again, I guess my big concern for Claire Scarlet is she does get damage done here. It's just how many Lings does she lose and how the efficiency of this. But right now, 1800 to about 1600, 1550. Ain't so bad, but now it's, you know, now it's all right for the moment. I'm finally getting a chance to maybe focus over here, but now he's going to be focused up to push into Roach Ravager. It's not really what you want to be playing against, right? Suddenly it's like Roach's Ravagers. You do have tanks. We're going to be taking this fight on the edge of creep. Again, a counterattack force on the third base to lift off four more SCVs. Scarlet relentless with these counterattacks, not letting Clem get settled at all on the other side of the map. Cross of Vowels continuing to land on in here, pushing this bio back. Is it enough for Scarlet? Can she hold on? Can she push this position away? If she can break through this. This game looks pretty good for her. She knocks down one siege tank. She has so much money to spend. If she can spend all that cash, she's going to be feeling very good. Tanks will go down. The marine numbers are withering, and Clem sits just barely above 100 supply while Scarlet. Okay, it's Roaches, but 160. 
She is looking real good. Going to open up some rocks and open up this map in general for her to go pushing across. I think she's going to be feeling pretty good about this one, guys. I think she's going to be feeling pretty okay. I think she should like her position for the moment, for sure. 1-1 one, one upgrades, Henley Engineer Base continuing through. CV's pulling over the side, just going to be seeing another... Oh, well, a factory on the way up. That's going to be the choice here. So again, that factory started. A little drop in the main base says... Sorry, don't get there in time. It's just standing up for a sec, guys. A little drop in the main base gets deflected, so Clem doesn't even get an unload there. And Scarlet is maxed out here in Royal Blood. Up 1-0 already. Game 2. Potential to go 2-0 against Clem if she can close this massive advantage out. She is ahead. Let's see if she can get it done. Thanks so much, Dagon1292, for the Prime sub. 16 months. Half a star sucks. 28 month resub on the Prime as well. Thank you guys for your support. As this drop unloads on the left hand side, a couple of medevacs are going to lift up. And they're going to get away for the moment. Scarlet's already coming in with some Roach Ravager here. She's going to knock down one tank. Can she get number two? I think so. Absolutely. Roaches on the left side. Now going to collapse in with the Roaches on the right. That looks pretty reasonable. These medevacs are loaded up. So these units aren't at home. And Scarlet just pushing through to the bottom side of the map here in Clem. Honestly, looks like he is in a ton of trouble. And uh, Scarlet is going to start picking off these units as they unload. I think maybe we don't have quite enough roaches. That one tank in the wall off, plus the few marines in the front, is currently holding on. But in general, I mean, the damage is being done again. 13 SCVs going down. Scarlet will lose a lot, but she's got the money to rebuild. And that's the most important part of this. If she has the money to rebuild, she can get set up once again. She can be okay in that regard. So Roger Ravager Force sat out the front here from Scarlet as Marines are going to stand straight into this again. Scarlet, this is one of those moments where as Clem, you might be like, man, she just lost a lot, right? She just lost so much attacking into me. And then you attack and you're like, no way, she's got so much still. And it's like, how? Well, probably because the start of this game was so good for a Clem, that's why. I don't know if Clem's actually asking these questions, but Wardy version of Clem is asking these questions. Roger Ravager coming through, just going to be seeing our Bio Force is... Uh, Getting jumped on the siege tanks again, taking a lot of damage, starting to fall. A couple of corrosive valves to help out with that. We do clean out all the tanks, which makes the future attacks obviously that much easier for the moment. And it's going to be seen our marines continue to chase. Roach Ravage again pushed away. We come back through this uh, tank, these marines. Going to come by, he's going to see a couple more corrosive vials dropping onto this siege tank. The roaches are still retreating backwards. It's going to be seen 12 roaches, 2 ravages, plus 2 missiles all setting up the army of Scarlet. Pretty much maxed once again. I mean, we feel it feels like a few times over we've been more or less just one fight away from perhaps closing this out. And Clan really is on the bare minimum at the moment. Does not have much left at all. Roaches and ravages are coming through. On this push. In we go! And he throws the bow down the siege tanks. One of them goes down. Made SCVs. I mean, again, you're pulling SCVs in to try and survive is obviously not exactly the prettiest scenario either. And that's going to be GG. Scarlet takes a 2 0 lead here over Clem. Well, especially with counterattacks and so on, she's, she's making sure that she keeps control of these games. She's making sure that she is the, run, the one making the decisions. And has a very well deserved 2 0 advantage right now. In this quarterfinal, there's going to be a hell of a lineup. If, if Scarlet wins this, a semifinal solo, he's always here. Hero Marine, I think he's the first time in a semifinal for Wardy TV events. Uh, not that Hero Marine's weird to see Hero Marine doing so well, just like in Wardy TV events, he doesn't usually make it this far. Um, <clears throat> and then Scarlet, I don't think, has been this deep in a Wardy TV event, at least not in a very long time, at least. Climb in the bottom right. He's obviously won one of our events in the past and so on. We'll see if we can bring this back and at least give us a series in our final quarterfinals of the day. Again, we do have the rest of the round of 12 and round of 8. Max Pax versus Gumiho, winner versus Dark as our opening matches on Sunday. Be here from 1 p.m. CEST and I'll fill you guys uh, Sunday with a whole ton of StarCraft 2 action. We'll have four best of fives and a best of seven of tip top players playing it out to become champions in the event.
Alrighty, guys, we got ourselves up and rolling then. Racks on the high ground as well, obviously, so moving away from some of that other aggression we've seen a little bit here and there. So mixing those things up just slightly. A little bit of a different approach here. Nothing too crazy about that. It's going to be seeing that Reaper coming across, drone on the way through, Queen's on the way up as well. Let's uh, follow this Reaper as the overlord gets going. Sorry guys, just had to check on something quickly, sorry for a couple moments before we got going. As our Reaper starts to fight, a little bit of damage being dealt. Well, uh, <coughs> Queen helping to push that away, and there's a hatchery coming in on the 3 o'clock office of 3rd base location as well. 3 o'clock position, god damn it, my brain's not in it apparently! Needs to be, though, because this is game three of this series, and Clem is on the verge of elimination. A couple of extra Hellions on the way through from him, and there's, again, just a completely different start to the Reaper stars that has just not been working for him up until this point. Tech Lab on the barracks. Is Double Gas or something fairly aggressive? He's not just going to play, like, a triple CC here. He is going to kind of keep the aggression up. Even on a map that's typically very good for Terran, he's just going to want to go for the kind of the aggressive variation here see what he can do so that will be his choice barracks gonna lift off that tech lab gonna go for the starboard on this so that gets set up kind of immediately link speeds about halfway through as well and we still have the now a couple of hellions trying to find something they actually did lose the reaper so probably just missed that on camera so the reaper goes down now the hellions are gonna dive in they're gonna look for some drones early are they gonna be able to find enough here Two workers going down. Three would be okay, I think, because it's been a pretty severe drone pull as well. Yeah, I would have said three would have been okay. He gets four in the end, actually. So, yeah, this is actually pretty okay for Clem, who has you know, two Hellions. Checking this base, just sees a drone spawning force as an extractor. And this is some of the pressure that Scarlet does struggle with, right? And when she takes this kind of damage early, this game can start to get very messy for her. It can become a whole lot more complicated than usual. I think that's the sort of game that I want to see these Terrans playing against, Scott. Where you get the damage done early, you throw her off, you don't let her control the run-bys and the game tempo in general. Lens get pushed down the right-hand side, Ling's coming back through. So away they go. I'm just going to be seeing how Ling's trying to get out the Frontier CC gets set. It's going to be actually a cancel, well not a cancel, but a little kill on the SCV building the CC at least, so that's a cute little something. And as you have, expansion continues all the way back up to the top. So let's deal some damage first. Queen's already taking some shots. Knight is on the way from Scarlet. Hilaire came up. It's going to be a Link Queen Nidus build just to try and take a nice, quick, early advantage and just basically try and close out this series. Uh, there's not really an opening to drop the Nidus anywhere. Nice, the Dropper Lord's going to try and get some Lings in, but Clem has units in position. Defensively, he is extremely well set up. He knows what's coming. He's seen the Nidus. He has no reason to do anything but defend. Uh, and that's exactly what he's going to start doing here. And I think Clem's going to put himself in a fantastic position because of it, so... Yeah, there's the knight. It's just going to come up on the natural. Maybe try and find the one place you'll least... Like, it's so obvious. It's like maybe the units won't be there to defend it, right? Because it's the least expected position because it is just that obvious. Um, that makes it so obvious it shouldn't work. And then maybe it does, but no, it gets denied. And this is a uh, hard failing here for Scarlet. The wall off is good, so the Lings can't get through. The Queens, uh, well, they've not made it across the map at all. They're in a Nidus that doesn't exist right now. The Dropper Lord can't do a thing because there's units in the main base as well. This defense is absolutely spot on. As the Hellions can actually go and deal with the Lings at the front and then just let the Banshee and some SCVs, I think, go for the Nidus. It's not actually targeting it for a little bit, but I don't think it necessarily matters too much. As that's going to be Clem taking game number three, and he's back in this series defending the Link Queen Nidus attack. Just with good information, good knowledge, and keep on bringing this back. Take us to a game five in the bottom right hand corner. Our Blue Zerg player, this is Scarlet. 
And the top left, our right Terran player from Liquid, Clem. Gets one back. That's the defense. Keeps the series alive. You know, for all the cool games today, all the cool matches, we've not actually been to a game five. 3-1-3-1-3-0-3-0-3-1. We have not been to game five yet today. Let's see if that continues. If it does, then unfortunate for Clem. If it doesn't, then maybe Clem's going to start that uh, real hype around the reverse sweep. Scarlet just looked so good in games one and two, though. Like, the run buys were great. She was constantly keeping up the pressure. She did not let Clem play the games of StarCraft 2 he wanted to play in the first couple of games. Look going across the map. There's once again the high ground barracks from Clem, most notably. Not going to be seeing any low ground into Reapers or anything. So just one Reap on the high ground. Probably see something fairly similar to the last game. Maybe it doesn't go double gas. Maybe instead goes something a bit more akin towards the uh, you know triple CC or so, and plays just that little bit more of a macro focus. Absolutely a possibility, of course. So it would not be unlike Clem to do anything that involves macro in the TVZ. Would in fact be quite standard as our SCV pulls back away from the front. A couple of queens and a few zerglings continuing out for the moment as well. It's just getting that going. And we do have ourselves. The queens and the links continue to produce Overlord on the way. The Reaper of Clem is on its way down to the bottom side of the map. Just for the moment. Things coming over. Reaper takes a couple shots of damage. We're gonna get one Zergling picked off. The other few Zerglings taking some hits as well. Continues to deal some damage here. A couple extra queens continue through. The links will continue to chase for just a few extra minutes. Protron starts. The CCs are building. It is indeed going to be triple CC this time around. So keep that economy kind of game in mind for Clem this time. He's going to be on a much better eco. Maybe more abusable if Scarlet does get aggressive. We see the Rotron coming down. So I'm already seeing kind of the possibilities lighting up as... Triple CC versus some early Roach pressure does not always end well for the Terran. And Scarlet right now does have 200 gas banked up as well. That's eight Roaches ready to build. So she's ready to go. She's got good supply ready too. She's absolutely going to build a ton of Roaches. So now it's going to be down to can Clem defend? Can he figure this out soon enough? Can he get the proper defenses in place? Right now he's pulling his Reaper back home because some Zerglings have slipped on by and that's going to keep him from scouting. And again, all the way throughout these games... Scott is trying to keep Clem on his side of the map, allowing her to do whatever she needs to do on her side of the map. In this case, you know, in previous games, it was buying time to get more units out. In this case, it's buying herself time to get units out, you know, and to stop Clem scouting. So instead of stopping Clem attacking, it's to stop Clem scouting is my point. It's like, you know, the same idea before a different effect. Now these roaches are seen as they are not quite halfway across the map, but close enough to it. They get a couple shots off on these Hellions. Instant bunker from Clem on the high ground, not even going to try and defend the low ground, which is probably smart considering you look at this defense, there's nothing on the low ground right now. If you have to lift up the CC and evacuate the low ground, you're losing what? I mean, you know, a refinery, realistically, if you pull everything away in time. So I don't think there's any shame in just trying to hold the high ground here and letting Scarlet take this low ground control for a little bit. Uh, we do see Scarlet moving up straight away. Clem evacuates. Obviously the CC has to lift and maybe you can't do much else for a little bit as a... This little uh, chorus of battle still comes through. Obviously, these depots will be in a bit of trouble as well. First Banshee's about to pop, though, and that's going to be a guaranteed defense against this. Especially if these units aren't already kind of like up and on top of workers and so on. You know, the Banshee will start to turn them around before they're doing serious damage. And at this point, I think you just pull these roaches away and try and save a couple of Skull. I think turning around and fighting, and uh, definitely don't push into the base. Maybe turning around and fighting some units that are nearby. The Ravagers actually make the run for it. The Roaches will stick around. Yeah, I kind of like that kind of way of doing it as well. The Ravagers are the more valuable units, so try and get those out of there, and the, other, the Roaches will just chill on the natural. CBs will move down to the low ground here. We're all going to drop into the natural as well. It's just getting this going. Two 
two more barracks currently on the way up. So, getting into the next step of this here is Clem. Good defense, didn't really lose too much. Scarlet droned behind it, but she's only on 42 to 41 workers, so she's not on a massive eco lead or anything coming out of this. It's not one of those roach attacks where suddenly it's like, well, you know, at least you're 15, 20 workers up because you droned and the Terran was dealing with it. No, it's not like that at all. I think Clem is uh, going to be pretty darn okay with where we sit. Especially if Scarlet has to make some new roaches as well, should Clem threaten any amount of damage here. Because right now, she, she lost every roach apart from a couple of Ravagers, so that's going to slow her droning down as well if she chooses to make units, and because of that, I do genuinely believe that uh, Clem is in a very good place as we just walk into the natural, okay? This is bad for Scarlet because, like I said, she doesn't really have many units. She didn't choose to rebuild them yet. So far, only three drones. This could be a whole lot worse. In fact, if we only get four drones out of this, this is pretty okay for Scarlet. Five? I don't think you can be upset there, right? Six workers, but you get every single Hellion. It's obviously not great because you do kind of want these workers. But then Clem just gave up all of his map control. Now all of this creep spread is going to go uncontested, for example. I mean, there is some good in this for sure. There is there is absolutely some amount of good in this, at the very least. As, like I say, it's maybe not ideal because the state of the game might just be she needs those workers and now she just dies without them to the follow-up push. But at least it wasn't like six workers just going down freely to the Banshees. Obviously, that could still happen, but... You know, like, this, what I'm trying to say is there's worse ways to lose six workers at this stage of the game, and... You know, getting all the Hellions for six workers, there's at least some kind of retribution, some time, you know, type of return of investment on those drones going down. I'm just going to try and cancel up this fourth base. As we do have ourselves, the uh, Queen's trying to get in position. Obviously, you're tracking these Banshees, so any cloaking is not exactly going to get them out of trouble. We try and get a Queen out of this, but the Queen is going to... Ah, I was going to say survive. It does eat a transfuse last second, so it does get there. <clears throat> and she's continuing to escape away. Bunch of creep continuing out. Melee attack upgrades continuing through. The armory is producing as well on the backside of this main. So Clem getting that armory up and running. A little bit more Roach Ravager just producing through as well. Just going to start going after the rocks over here. Knocking those down, opening up the map as Skull gets ready to go to the other side. 68 drones. Her economy still just never really taken off the way I think she wanted to. To me right now, I look at the 68 workers and it just doesn't, doesn't feel like it's enough, right? It doesn't feel like this is truly threatening. It doesn't feel like this is going to be what we need to go punching across the map with. Our Marines chilling in the center and we got a couple medivacs overhead. Missile, carapace upgrades continuing through. The four additional overlords are producing here as well. So all of this being brought in. We scan up, we knock down a bit more creep spread. The Banshee's head top right side. This army of Clem continuing to head down the south. We see more Roach Ravager into the center as well. It's going to start knocking down this set of rocks. We're just going to work our way through this. The extra Ravager's coming in on the right side. These rocks will fall. This base will open up a little bit. And here we go, Scarlet attacks in. Clem not in position immediately, so we are going to pull the SCVs away. Ten SCVs go down to the splash damage, I believe. Of the siege tanks. Now the tanks on the high ground, though, are putting in some serious work as Scarlet walked up into that choke point. That's messy. That's nasty. That's uh, not exactly the prettiest of situations. These Banshees get back. They're going to help to start working through these roaches a little bit extra. CC, fourth CC has to lift up. Of course, keeping this alive is just a testament to the position Clem can be in on the follow up to this because, you know, if you're ending up on a fourth base here, I feel like you're in a pretty okay spot when Scarlet is. Kind of all in, right? She only just starts up 2-2 after this fight. This was pretty committed from Scarlet. She's got no fourth base of her own. She is just not in a good place to play out a longer game. So just defending this as Clem is looking very good for him. The supplies are still there for Scarlet, but like I say, there's no fourth. There's no reason to suggest that Scarlet's going to be okay if this game truly does continue on for any amount of time. And it looks like it's going to. Clem has held those tanks on the high ground, put in some pretty serious work. He resets his third. He's got the fourth base finished. And right now he's still got Ravagers, uh, or Banshee, sorry, Bully and Ravagers around the map as well. So they will continue to put in some pain and trouble and just make uh, Scarlet's life as difficult as possible. It sounds weird because Scarlet, you're like, Scarlet's max though, guys, but it's like, Clem's about to hit 2 2 against 1 1. It is purely Roach Ravager, and even then, it's not even super high Ravager counts. Like, the tech just isn't there for Scarlet. If she had, like, three or four infested sprinkled in, I'd be a lot more, you know, comfortable for her. 
Right now, these first couple of tanks are going to get some good shots off. The tank in the back will do some work. Clem has army from the right-hand side, remember, that's going to be coming back across here. And already you can see Clem basically fought this with half of his army. Now the other half shows up. Like, he needed the other half to finish it off right and to, you know, truly clean up here. But he gets that there. He cleans it up. And that will be that as Clem is going to be uh, really looking to take us to a game five. For the first time today, we're going to go the distance. Bio still pushing across to the right. Going in, our rocks taking some shots. Where do you see the Banshee's trying to get some damage done against a couple of these queens? A couple of drones taking damage too. And Clem just on the push. One overlord goes down, second one. Continue to fight in here. These roaches continue to drop. Ravages. Gonna get picked off as well. It's a lot of ravages going down. These roaches all dropping. GG says Scarlet. We are going the distance. We're gonna see the full series between Clement and Scarlet here in the bottom right hand corner. The Blue Zerg player. He was up 2-2. Two to two, uh, so 2 to 0, sorry. And now it's 2-2. Two to two. It is Scarlet from the Shopify Rebellion. Top left, Red Terran, Team Liquid. It is Clem. Yo, XCon man with the 25 pound donation, just a little donation, bro. Thank you so much. That's our third 25 donation a day. That is actually a little bit bonkers. We don't see donations a lot on the channel anymore. That's absolutely fine. That's just how Twitch chat is changing everything. But like, that is uh, actually kind of bonkers to see three in a day. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Thank you. For the generosity. Alrighty, guys, we are obviously setting ourselves up here for game number five. New Humanity is a map. A lot of Terrans like this, but some Zergs like this map. Some Zergs actually video it pretty early against Terrans. The map itself is kind of a little up in the air as to how people like to play it and so on. SCV coming through, the Overlord is heading to the upper left-hand side for a few moments. Yeah, hatch, gas pool coming up, couple drones coming in, the Reaper's coming in. That's SCV. That's just been scouting, obviously, the uh, high ground barracks again. Let's follow the Reaper as it comes through. The SCV is going to try and block the third. This is not a fun base to have blocked because as the Zerg, you don't really have much of an opportunity to go elsewhere. I've seen Dark go over here a couple times lately and mine out the gold minerals. Oh, there's this cute movement with the drone, though. She wanted to get the gold, uh, the forward hatch. She realized that there was probably going to be a Reaper there, so she couldn't. So she went the long way around, got it anyways. That was actually very swift movement with the uh, drony. Freaking awesome. Now oh, that was very cool. Uh, very cool from Scholar. Gets the forward hatchery down. Now she has an aggressive forward hatch to maybe look at here. Heck yeah. And yo, thank you so much. Another 25 pound donation. You guys are really uh, going bonkers on the donations today. Thank you so freaking much. So I heard the ding, I saw the valley, I didn't quite get to read the name. I'm trying to get that ASAP, but my dashboard's not loading. Give me one second. Oh my god, and another one. What the hell's going on? <laughs> guys, you guys have literally just like tripled our donation revenue for the year in, in, in like one stream. I swear down. Oh yeah, yeah. First of all, uh, first one came in from Snoopy T7 says thanks for the fun tournaments. Thank you so much. And the Ice and Nine, good to see you, mate. Thank you so much as well. For the 25 pound donation as well. Thank you so much, everybody. For supporting the stream, supporting these tournaments. Glad you're enjoying them. Queens and Lings come out over to the front. As you do, start to nibble on these rocks. Obviously, knock these rocks down. You limit some of the pressure Clem can apply and the speed at which he can come across the map at you. Banshee and a couple of Hellions on the way. Ling speed is about to be done over here. So getting this finished up. 
in the next few moments as we do. I think I can just jump back onto this set of rocks and just knock this down in the middle of the map. The slings do be a nibbling to work our way through this. On the right side, Hellions and a Reaper coming around. Old Lord sitting overhead, just chilling out for the moment. Little grenade just gonna pop the queen around. And just seeing ourselves the Hellions and the Reaper back over to the right hand side and chased out of here for now. Let's go pew pew pow pow. Hellions won't do too much just yet as his cloak coming up. A super fast spire from Scarlet though. Two things that means. That's going to be, obviously, super fast by it means, A, you've got detection immediately against the Banshees because you're going to have Overseers available. And B, uh-oh, B, you're going to have Mutas to shut down the Banshees too. Here come the Lings, though, straight into the natural expansion of Clem. He is on 3cc, so rebuilding some of this economy may be possible, but this is not a great start if we lose out on a lot of these workers. The Hellions get here, only two workers lost so far. This is actually not going to be so bad. Scott loses a lot of Lings. The only thing she will achieve is that she does slow Clem down that little bit. Once again, the Hellions have to pull back. It gives her more time to get towards those mutas. It's been a big talking point of how Scarlet's been playing today. The Banshees showing up. First one from the left-hand side into the natural. Sport is done in a few moments' time. It's going to spot the Spire as well, so now Clem knows for sure what he is playing against. The Hellions are around over here, looking as though they want to try and find a way to sneak in. They take a step onto Creep when the Lings were there. That was only ever going to be a mistake. Don't know what Clem saw in that moment, but it was not it. He's going to lose all of his Hellions. The Skull is now going to have eight meters on the way. Clem's anti-air, four Marines right now. He's going to need the turrets off the engineering base. He has got the engineering base up. He's going to start up his upgrades, but he's got more work to be done right now. He needs to get preparation going. As Scarlet, 11 meters on the way. Uh, Clem, are we not taking this seriously? He saw the Spire, no? Like he's, he's seen it, but did he realize it was a Spire? I'm not sure he realized it was a Spire. He's, he must know it now. He just saw Mutalis spawn. Instantly turrets go up. Oh my god. He saw the Spire, but it never registered because he was so busy elsewhere. So he had no idea. The anti-air on this base is absolutely zero. And Clem's going to start losing their CVs. His handful of Marines will try and hold on, but the Mutas can actually fight them. That's how much trouble you're in, Clem. You are having Mutas choosing to fight your Marines. Oh dear, Siege Tank's gonna go down as well. There's no defense on this natural. Lings are flooding through. The main base may be opened up, but honestly, there's work to be done on this natural alone. I guess if you get in the main, you straight up just camp the production. Banshee's getting killed as they come back home. The few Marines here will have one turret to work with. The SCVs try and pull up into the main base. That's not gonna go very well either, as we are gonna be seeing these mirrors turning back around, going to the wall off, and just gonna start eating through the depots to make sure that future units can keep on flooding through. There's no upgrades on the way from Scarlet. There's nothing. She is just committed to this attack right now, and as she moves up this ramp, in she goes. The Marines have gone into a little bit better numbers. Is it enough for Clem to make a hold? The Mutas have decided to attack. If Clem is able to clean out these Mutas, maybe there's a way, but he does not have enough. The Medivac has to evacuate the few Marines. The Siege Tank will go down. I think it's fair to say that this is looking terrible for Clem, as Skull is going to absolutely own Clem's production lines very shortly. She is going to own the natural. Ling's flooding in there. There's no defense against them. There's the third CC that's landed that Skull could also go to as well. And yeah, the Mutas are just going to dance back and forth. We're going to try and drop Marines to the low ground, because that's how desperate we are to do something about this. G, G's. Scarlet eliminates Clem from the Warty TV Spring Championship. And that is going to be all they rode for Clem. And a Terran on the... I know, there is still a Terran on this top side of the bracket, but Scarlet into the semifinals most notably with an awesome series that really revolved around counterattacks, it revolved around...